Well, apparently Sony is the first to do it. Sony just announced the Sony A93 completely out of the blue. I didn't even read any rumors about this camera and they are the first to market with a full frame global shutter camera. This is the biggest advancement in digital photography since we had the first digital camera that could shoot video probably. Let me explain how big of a deal this is. The way almost every digital camera works is it reads pixel by pixel, line by line to create an image on the sensor. Obviously it does this incredibly fast, but you can actually see this rolling shutter if you shoot video and you pan really quickly, you can see your video start to go like this and the whole thing kind of becomes jello. To mitigate this with still photography as well as allow your camera to sync with a strobe, almost every camera up until this point had a physical shutter and you can set the shutter speed of your camera and it will physically change the amount of time that the shutter will open up exposing light on your sensor. But now with the Sony A93, the camera has a global shutter, meaning that every single pixel is going to be exposed at the exact same moment. And for the first time ever, we're going to have flawless video without any rolling shutter artifacts at all. And more importantly, the camera no longer requires a physical shutter at all. We can now get perfect images and video from our sensor without any moving parts in the camera at all. This is the holy grail of digital photography features. And we've been saying when this feature comes, this is going to change photography and cameras forever because now you can make cameras that are smaller, faster, more reliable than ever before. Basically, this camera can shoot 120 frames per second of raw photos. It does this without any blackout at all. So you're basically just recording videos and choosing the stills that you want afterwards. This allows for pre-capture of photos. This is such a game changer. Basically, the camera is constantly shooting raw photographs nonstop all the time. And then when you click the shutter button, it's going to go back in time and save a few of those clips. It has another cool feature where you can boost with the shutter button to shoot at a certain frames per second speed and then hold a second button on the front of the camera to boost even faster up to 120 frames per second. Like a camera with a physical shutter, it can still go all the way up to one eight thousandth of a second, but it can also sync with any flash at any shutter speed. This is huge. Every other camera on the market syncs around one two hundredth of a second. Some flashes allow a high speed sync mode where it either does a longer flash so that it can sync with a shorter shutter speed or it does flash bursts. But when you do this, you're actually losing a ton of light. For the first time ever, we are now going to be able to sync at any shutter speed and hopefully we're gonna be able to get the majority of our flash power at each one of these shutter speeds. This is going to be a huge game changer with flash photography. Now, I was wondering how a camera like this is going to sync up with each different type of flash because each flash has a slightly different flash curve over time, but they've thought of that and there's a way to sync this camera up with whatever flash you're using, which is crazy. Now, the reason I switched over to Sony a few years ago was because of their autofocus system. They've taken it to the next level with this camera. I don't even really know what a lot of this means and what it's capable of doing, but it's showing this one thing saying human pose estimation technology recognizes body and head. I don't really know what this means. Maybe this is saying that it can recognize a person and what they're about to do and it's going to plan ahead so that it can keep them in focus better than previous cameras. I don't know, but I'm excited to test it out. Now, I'm not a big animal photographer or videographer, but you'll be happy to know that the camera can also recognize animals of all kind and lock on to their weird shaped eyes. This is going to be a game changer for wildlife photographers as well. Like other Sony cameras, it has in-body stabilization and this is claiming an eight stop advantage, which is unbelievable. I feel like this is the best I've ever heard. I definitely need to test this feature out myself because for video especially, the in-body stabilization is a game changer. One of the slides has something very interesting here. It says composite raw shooting for reduced noise. And if you look at the bottom, it says the latest version of Imaging Edge desktop. I hate that software, but <laughs> we have to use it. The application is required for compositing. The lowest allowable shutter speed for composite raw shooting is 1 30th of a second. Now I've seen some other cameras that can do something like this with still subjects. Like if you're shooting a product and your camera was on a tripod, you can composite multiple images together and get a super clean or super high res photo. This is specifically showing a photo of a girl, which is super interesting. So there can be potentially camera movement and movement of the subject and it's still going to work 
Once again, this is a massive game changer in terms of low light photography and something that I'm excited to try myself. This is another super interesting slide, flicker free shooting. Flicker cannot cause brightness or color variations within a single image. So basically if you've ever shot under fluorescent or LED lights, you know sometimes it can create these weird bands that kind of move up and down your image. And then if you take a picture without a shutter, it can show up in your pictures and it's definitely gonna show up in your video. This is kind of simulating that on the image on the left and saying this is something you're not going to have to worry about with the new camera. I would imagine that you're still going to have to worry about flicker between one shot to the next. But now with a global shutter, each individual frame will be totally clean. Now, as you know, I'm most excited about video and this camera can shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second without cropping. I would expect that. Real-time recognition autofocus for movie using AI processing unit. Again, the autofocus has been so incredible on my other Sony cameras. It's almost difficult for me to imagine it being that much better, but uh, I'm excited to try this out. Here's another interesting one, focus breathing compensation. So a lot of times when you focus rack a lens with a super high-end lens. It's not going to zoom at all while you're doing that, but with cheaper lenses and sometimes with photography lenses, there's a little bit of zoom and it makes racking focus a little bit more jarring. It just makes it look cheaper. And so this camera says that it has focus breathing compensation. So if your lens has a focus breathing problem, maybe that's not an issue anymore. Now this camera is geared towards professionals, probably sports photographers and photojournalists. I just looked up the price, it's $6,000. It's incredibly expensive. It's probably too expensive for me to justify owning one of these cameras. It's also only 24 megapixels, so it's not a super high resolution camera either. But even if this camera is too expensive for you and you say, I just can't justify spending that, this is still incredibly exciting news because all of these features are going to quickly start showing up in other cameras. Not just other Sony cameras, but I guarantee you the other players have been working on this exact same technology they probably are just going to buy Sony's sensor and just put their sensor in their camera. I think Nikon's done that in the past anyway. So this technology is going to be coming to cameras everywhere, and this is super exciting stuff. Not only is this going to make filmmaking so much easier and more professional looking because you're not gonna have to deal with that rolling shutter look, it's also going to make cameras in general so much smaller and cheaper and more reliable. You're not going to have to worry about your shutter wearing out anymore. It's absolutely going to change flash photography forever. You no longer have to buy some crazy 3000 watt light. You're going to be able to get incredibly powerful strobe lights out of handheld strobes now because you can sync at one eight thousandth of a second. You're basically just going to be cutting out all of your ambient light and accepting only the flashlight. So that's going to change the look of photos. I'm sure people are going to be able to use this technology and create photos like we've never seen before. So I just quickly wanted to make this video and explain to you how big of a deal this camera is. We have literally been talking about this global shutter camera that's right around the corner and it's going to change everything for almost 10 years now. I can't believe it's taken this long. I've been hearing rumblings about Canon's working on it, Sony's working on it, it's coming out next year and it never came out, it never came out. Well, here it is. This is a massive day for professional photographers and videographers everywhere and I am so excited to get my hands on this camera and test it out for myself. Are you a photographer? Well, we're doing a huge portrait photography contest right now. The winner is actually going to get Tamron's updated version of their 70 to 180 millimeter 2.8 lens. This lens is absolutely incredible with my Sony cameras, but if you happen to shoot Nikon or Canon, you can choose that mount as well. Second place is going to get the world's most advanced Thunderbolt dock by Ivanki. And third place is going to win a free tutorial from the F Stopper store. You can check out this contest at fstoppers.com contest right now. <laughs>